and this is something you really want to pay attention to when it comes to your kids' health, because have you heard of jeweling? And if you are a parent, you really need to pay attention to this. Here to fill us in on what exactly jeweling is, we have UC Davis Children's Hospital pediatrician, Dr. Tiffany Hend Heckendorn. And um, oh. uh, <laughs> it's a Monday. Um, um, but uh, uh, Dr. Heckendorn, help us understand what exactly is jeweling, because I have to be honest, this is the first time I've actually ever heard of that term. Yeah, and a lot of parents say the same thing. So mm -hmm. jeweling is something that kids are using to describe using a specific electronic cigarette device called a jewel. Okay, so it's a type of vaping. Exactly. It's basically what it is, but mm -hmm. they're calling it jeweling for short. Yes. All right, so what does this look like? So I actually have one here. It looks like okay. this. Um, so you can see it kind of looks similar to like a USB device. So the Absolutely. first time I saw this, I had no idea what it was. Yeah. Um, it's easily like concealed in the palm of your hand, which is part of the problem because kids can easily conceal it at school, mm -hmm. and it's difficult for parents and teachers to identify what it is. Yeah, and exactly like you had mentioned, it looks like a piece of technology. So yeah. if a parent saw that on a child's desk or in a backpack, mm -hmm. you'd instantly probably assume it was a USB. Just yeah. going, oh, they're staying on top of their studies. Absolutely. Okay, but let, let's talk about what makes this so darn harmful. Yeah. So the reason that um, electronic cigarettes are so harmful to children, first and foremost, is nicotine. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids, and I think even adults, think, oh, electronic cigarettes are safe. They don't have chemicals. They don't have the nicotine that traditional cigarettes have. And that's not true. They absolutely do. In fact, one of these pods, uh -huh. um, which is what you would buy, contains as much nicotine as a pack of traditional cigarettes. Really? Yeah. That is one pack of cigarettes yes. right there? Right there. No way. And for the Juul specifically, that's twice as much as a lot of other um, electronic cigarette devices. Okay, so what is that doing to developing teenagers and young kids? So there's a lot of side effects of nicotine, but mm -hmm. one of the biggest problems is that young brains are really susceptible to addiction. Yeah. We know that. And so getting exposure to nicotine at an early age through these electronic cigarette devices are leading to increased use of traditional cigarettes as adults because they're getting addicted to the nicotine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And everyone knows using cigarettes is harmful. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just getting them right into that track. Okay. So what advice do you have for parents watching, though? Give us some tips. How do, how do we navigate around this? So one thing is just being familiar with what this device is. And the Juul is not the only electronic cigarette. Um, that doesn't necessarily look like an electronic cigarette. So go Google electronic cigarettes and see what they look like so that you're aware, and then talk to your kids. Mm -hmm. um, and talk to them even as early as middle school. The FDA just put out their 2018 youth survey results, and 21% of high schoolers now endorse using electronic cigarettes. Really? And even 5% of middle schoolers. M middle schoolers? Yeah. And to put oh, that yeah. in perspective, that's 1.5 million new students using electronic cigarettes just in 2018. And why do you think? Uh, they're so attracted to this. So the number one reason that kids say that they use these products is because of the fun flavors. There's okay. flavors like cotton candy, melon, fruit medley, and those are things that weren't offered for traditional cigarettes, mm -hmm. and so that's really appealing to kids. Okay, and, and also too, I imagine if uh, teens are talking with their friends about these flavors, it sounds like candy, so yeah. parents are, that are unassuming, right? Mm -hmm. You're not gonna know, they're like talking about cotton candy. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, like got a hankering for some sweets or something, right? You're not yeah. going to assume that this giant USB in their backpack right. and their conversation a lot about sweets is associated exactly. with uh, the consumption of nicotine. Exactly. Right? Okay. And and I really appreciate the advice too, just making sure that parents are Googling and staying on top of stuff because you and I were talking off camera, there just seems to always be something new every single year. You know, vaping just came out, you can know what those devices look like, then now there's new terms right. coming. Uh, it's just important as always to, to stay on top of the trends, I guess, if yes. you will. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, and where, where can parents go for more information? Because I know that, you know, vaping is just kind of the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. when it comes to, uh, you know, t teens kind of having that gateway into um, to addiction and, and, and using other products as well. Yeah, absolutely. So they can always go to our UC Davis website, children.ucdavis.edu, to find out more information about all these topics, but specifically about juuling, too. Okay. And how important do you think it is, though, too, that parents are um, carrying on these conversations with their doctors, with their pediatricians? Um, and that they're also inviting their children to also have these conversations, too, with their doctors. It's hugely important. And one of the things that I've been trying to incorporate into my own practice and seeing patients is mm -hmm. asking kids starting at that middle school age, like, do you use electronic cigarettes? Do you jewel? Like, using the terms that mm -hmm. they use. Um, and also talking to them about, are their friends using it? Because even if your child might not be using an electronic cigarette, mm -hmm. they may have friends that are. Yes. And we know peer pressure, if friends are using something, your kid's likely going to try it. So talk to them about what their friends are doing, too, and just try to stay in the loop in their lives. Mm -hmm. And making sure that they feel confident enough, too, that they can continue to say no, that they're not feeling the weight of the peer pressure. Mm -hmm. 
And also, too, I mean, um, I imagine being able to have a resource like you where parents are confident and comfortable talking to you as well because sometimes it's hard to talk to your teen yeah. about these type of Absolutely. topics and make it seem kind of cool and in a way that the conversation is that that they absorb it, that they're not kind of blocking it out and mm -hmm. like, oh, my oh, parent, gosh, oh, One this conversation, really? Yeah. You're so lame. You know, you don't want that takeaway. You want them to take it serious and understand why it's important that they avoid uh, the, the, this type of consumption. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, one more time, do you mind uh, reminding everybody of where they can go for more information? Yes. Okay. It's children.ucdavis.edu. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Greatly appreciate it. This interview involves commercial content. The products and services featured appear as paid advertising.